All right, so a relation is a set of ordered pairs. Okay. A function, a function is a special kind of relation. So a function is also a relation. But here's the definition of a function. So a function is a relation. Right. Do any of you remember what a function is from a previous course? What's the what's the words? Okay. All right. A function of relation in which for each x coordinate there is only one y coordinate. So for each x coordinate, there's exactly one, not two, not three, just one. All right, so that's what a function is. So let's look at some examples with this. So we're going to start out with these kinds. Okay, determine. All right, so determine whether each relation is a function. And then determine the domain and range. All right, so determine whether each relation is a function and then determine the domain and range. So the domain we talked about, that's a set of which coordinates? X and the range is a set of y. y coordinates. All right, so here's number one. All right, so, so the way that this will be represented will be written as a set of ordered pairs because what's that's what the definition of relation is. A relation set of ordered pairs. So let's suppose we had this. Suppose we had um, 4, 5, the ordered pair 4, 5, comma, the order pair six seven, comma, and the order pair eight eight. So y'all agree that's a relation. Why is that a relation? The set of order pairs. You can see the set of order pairs. It has how many order pairs? Three. Three. All right. Now we need to determine if that's a function. Now here's here's the best way to determine it's a function. Some student, you don't have to do it this way. You can you can look at this and some of you can look at this and say right away what's the function or not. But here's the idea. We're going to draw a mapping domain range. So a mapping. That's what you should have see in your mind is this mapping. And then and remember your domain is a set of x coordinates. So we're going to list the x coordinates here and we're going to draw an arrow to what it is mapped to. So what's the first number in my domain I'm going to put here? Four. It gets mapped to what y value? Five. Five. So, and as you go, think about the definition. Definition says for each x coordinate, there's got to be what? One y coordinate. So if I don't do anything else, so far, is this a function? Yes, yes because when x is four, there's exactly one y value. What is it? Five. Five. All right, but you got to keep on going. When x is six, what is my y value? Seven. All right, so notice, notice, from, from each x coordinate so far, there's only one arrow extending from it, right? There's a, you see that's one arrow? Yes or no? Okay. That means that when x is 4, there's exactly one y value. What is it? 5. When x is 6, there's exactly one y value. What is it? 7. But we have one more to look at. When x is 8, there's exactly one y value, and it is what? 8. So based on the definition of function, is this a function? Yes. Yes. Because for each x coordinate, there's only one y coordinate. So this is a function. That's a function. All right, now the next thing we've got to do is determine the domain and range. Right, now before we do that, let me just remind you what we just did a while ago. A while ago, we used 
when we found the domain and range here, we use an interval. Why do we have to use an interval here? Give me something better than that. What's another? What? What? Why? You're on the right track, but you're not using what I'm asking. What I really want. Why do I need to write this as an interval? How many? How many? Um, how many x coordinates are there in this domain? Infinite number. So can you list them one by one? No. No. You have to use a what? An interval. Okay. Over here, am I going to use an interval here? No, because your domain consists of how many numbers? Three. There are only three. It's a finite number. This is an infinite number, right? This is a finite number. I can count how many x coordinates there are. There are how many? Three. So you're not going to use an interval. You better not, because if you do, you're saying there's an infinite number of these of these x coordinates. There's only three of them. Now here's how you list it. And that's when we use that notation. We use that notation right? Yeah, so you're going to use this. You're going to use a brace. Now I'm not doing a very good job drawing the brace here, but you can use a brace, just like this. And all you do is just use, you just, all you do now is just list your three x coordinates. Now you really should put them in numerical order, but if you don't, it's no big deal. But let's put them in numerical order. What's the smallest my, uh, of my domain? Four. What's the next one? Comma, six, comma, eight, and you're done. That's your domain. I prefer. If you didn't, I won't take off any points, but I would prefer they be in numerical order. All right. The range. Is my range going to be an interval or a just a uh, finite set? Finite. finite set. So remember, use the brace. Don't put parentheses. You put parentheses, you'll be upset with me because you got to write it as a brace, as a set. So what's going to be my smallest one? And then seven, eight. Okay, so that's your range and domain. All right, let's look at this one, number two. All right, suppose you had um, five, six, five, seven, six, six. Um, eight two. I'm sorry. Let me, let me go ahead and change this right here, right here. I'm sorry. Change this to five nine. Ah, ah I messed this up. Change that to four six. Sorry, four six, four six. Just go ahead and do it. You're fine. Four six. Okay, so is that a relation? Yes. Now, now be careful. Everything's going to be a relation because it's set of what? Order pairs. pairs. The question is, is that a function? No. All right, well, let's look at the mapping. Hey, are you changing your mind? Okay, so let's now. Now, when we list the domain range, if it occurs more than once, only list it once. Okay, if it lists it more than once, you, you're going to mess it up somehow. List it once. Okay, what's the first element in my domain? Five. It gets mapped to what? Eight. Six. Okay, what's the next element in my domain? Four. It gets mapped to. Six. I already have six listed. Don't list it again. So draw it like this. That's how you draw it. Okay. What's the next element in your domain? It gets mapped to what? Six. Don't list it again. What's the next element in your domain? Six. It gets mapped to what? Two. Two. Okay, now, is this a function? Yes. Does anyone disagree? All right, you got to remember the definition of a function. For each x coordinate, there's exactly what? One, one y coordinate. So, in other words, when x is 5, is there only one y coordinate assigned to 5? It is what? Six. six. When x is four, is there only one y coordinate assigned to it? Yes. It is six. six. When x is six, is there only one? Yes. It is six. six. When x is eight, is there only one? Yes. It is two. two. It's okay for six y equals six to occur with many x coordinates. You just can't have 
and we're going to look at one a little while ago, you can't have two of these arrows extending from an X, right? So, so notice how many arrows are coming off from each of those X's? Just one. For each X coordinate, there's exactly one Y coordinate. So that's a function. Okay. Now, what's the domain? Brace right. Four, five, six, and eight. What's the range? Two and six. Don't list six three times. Don't say two, six, six, six. It's just two and six. All right. All right, number three. Okay, suppose you had negative uh, 2, 5, 4, 6, 3, negative 1, negative 2, 8. So negative 2, 5, 4, 6, 3, negative 1, 2, negative, negative 2, 8. All right, so we have this relation. We've got to determine it's a function. Is it a function? No. All right, now, if it's not a function on the worksheet, if it's not a function, you got to tell me why. you got to explain if, it's, if you say it's not a function. Give, tell me why this would not be a function. Because you say, right. Now, but you're going you're to say a little bit better than that. You're going to say, because when x is negative 2, there are how many y coordinates? Two. Two y coordinates. All right, so if you do the mapping, though, as your domain, this is your range. When x is negative 2, what's, what is my y value for the first one? 5. You all agree? Okay. When x is 4, what's my y value? 6. When x is 3, what's my y value? So far, it looks like it's a function, right? You all agree so far? Okay. But when x is negative 2, which I already have listed, I'll list it again. It gets mapped to what? 8. So what's the issue? There are two y right. So when x is negative 2, remember the definition says in order to be a function, for each x coordinate, there's got to be exactly one y coordinate. Well, the issue is this. When x is negative 2, there are how many y coordinates? Two. two. So it's not a function. So this is not a function. Since when x equals negative 2, there are two y coordinates. Okay. All right. Now, what's the domain, though? Domain of this relation. All right. Make sure you rise a brace. Note put put that in parentheses. Use brace notation. Set notation. And the range will be not two a. Wait. Yeah, negative one, five, six, eight. Okay. All right, let's look at this one. All right, four. Suppose I'm given, I'm going to draw this coordinate plane. And let's suppose I have this this circle. Okay, in this coordinate plane, I have that circle. It's in the first quarter. It could be anywhere. I just put the first quarter. So my question is, is, is this a relation? First of all, is that a relation? Yeah. Well, how do you know that's a relation? Because a circle is made up of points, and points are ordered pairs. So is this a set of ordered pairs? Yeah. yeah, so graph, so relations not only are represented by a set of ordered pairs, but it can also be uh, represented by a graph. So this relation. Now the question is this, is this a function? No. All right. Well, <laughs> mathematically, All right. Mathematically, for, for example, if you, if you look at this x coordinate, whatever it is, whatever this x coordinate is, do y'all see you get two points on the, on the, uh, the graph, right? Yes. 
Okay, do you understand? Do you understand this is not a function because whatever this x coordinate is, there's this y coordinate, and then there's what? That y coordinate. So when whatever this x coordinate is, there's how many different y coordinates? Two. Two. There's this one, and there's this one. Now I'm about to use a certain test. You remember that test? Vertical line test. So a vertical line test. So we're gonna use a vertical line test. So whenever the graph is given, you're asked to determine it's a function, use a vertical line test. So, so if I draw a vertical line, let's say here, that vertical line indicates that it crossed the graph how many places? Two. Two. What that means is that for this x coordinate, see this x coordinate right here that I'm kind of circled dark? It has how many y values? Two. Two. So, so the vertical line test says this. Um, so a graph represents a function if no matter where you draw a vertical, no matter no matter where you draw a vertical line, no matter where you draw a vertical line, it has to intersect the graph how many times? No, 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 no. For it to be a function. Once. A graph represents a function. A graph represents a function if no matter where you draw a vertical line, it intersects the graph once every time. Okay? So, when, when I, for this circle, when I draw the vertical line, here's my question. See this one right here? It intersected it once, but why is it not a function? Yeah, because it says it's got to intersect it once each time. So when I do it here, how many times did it intersect it? Twice. What was that? Yeah, the circle is never going to be a function. All right. Okay. All right, number five. So remember last semester you graphed, you graphed simple parabolas. Now you're going to graph hard parabolas soon, but you graph simple ones. So for example, um, is this a function? Yes, because no matter where I draw a vertical line, it intersected what? It intersected how many times? Once. Now make sure you understand what that means. That means that for this x value right here, there's only one what? Y value. For this x value right here, this one right here, there's only what? One y value. That's what that means. Okay? So this is a function. So what you're going to say is this. This is a function. Here's how you write it. You're going to write it like this. You're going to say this is a function because it passes the vertical line test. Okay, because it passes the vertical line test. So the previous one, you would say this is not a function because it fails the vertical line test. So either it passes the vertical line test or it fails the vertical line test. Does this represent a function? No. Well, it intersects at once all of these places. What's the issue? Right here, right? So right, right around here, uh, it uh, it fails the vertical line test, right? So it's not a what? Not a function. All right. So given a graph, you can you can determine if it represents a function by using what test? Vertical line test. Okay. Now. Let's look at this one. So we can represent a relation, a relation using a set of ordered pairs. We could represent a relation from a graph, or we can represent a relation from an equation. Because in that equation, set of ordered pairs, yeah. because you see set X and Y's, right? 
So I said, Award of Pairs. Do you remember what, what graph that is, number seven? It's linear. So what's a graph? A line. A line. It's a line. So, so, um, now, you may remember something from, it, it wasn't last semester, it was two semesters ago when you drew these lines. What's the slope here? Okay, you remember? So, so remember y equals mx plus b, right? Now we're going to talk a little bit more again about this in a, in a future section. But you remember doing this in two, two semesters ago in, in 90, not 99, but 98. There's a whole chapter on slope. Um, but y equals mx plus b. So the, the coefficient of x is your slope. So what's my slope here? 2. So m is 2. The b, the constant, is your y-intercept. Remember, that's your y-intercept. What's b here? 1. All right, and there's a quick way, when, whenever it's like this, there's a quick way of graphing it. You can just use the slope and the intercept, watch. So, the, so to graph this, you would, you would first of all, uh, remember to graph a line, you need how many points? Two. You need two points to graph a line, all right? The y, is the y-intercept a point? Is the y-intercept a point? Yes, because that's where the graph crosses the y-axis. So it's a point. So you can do that first. So that's 1 right here. So from that point, you use a slope. What's my slope? 2. Remember rise of a run? No, remember. It's been a while, right? It's been at least a semester ago. So slope is rise of a run. You all agree that the slope here is 2 though, right? 2 over 1. So what's my rise? Two. What's my run? One. So, so if it's positive, if the rise is positive, we go up. If the rise is negative, we go down. If the run is positive, we go to the right. If the run is negative, we go to the left. Yes. Right here. Okay. Y equals mx plus b. Your constant is your y yourself. That's one. Oh, five is the same thing as five over one, right? Yo, if, if, if I give you the number 8 and I ask you, what is that as a fraction, what are you going to say? 8 over 1. 8 over 1. Okay, I got it. All right, okay. That's all right. <laughs> okay. It's okay. <laughs> Y'all learned that when you were in, uh, one year old. Remember when you learned your numbers? One, two, three, one over one, two over one, three over one, and so on. All right, now let's talk about the slope. So from this point, you go up two and to the right one. And there's your other point. So you went up two from the slope and to the right one, and then you drew your line. So this is the graph of that equation. So, so first of all, you had to know this was linear, correct? Yeah. All right. Then you could, all of you could graph linear lines. Now, you, you we, we could have used a t-table, and we're going to do that in a little while. But you could have used a t-table as well. You didn't have to use slope over uh, slope and, and y-intercept. Now, we're going to talk about this again in a couple more sections. You didn't have to do this now. But you did talk about this a couple of semesters ago. So for, so now, now that you know what the graph looks like, does it pass the vertical line test? Yeah. yeah. yeah so this is a function. Do you require a point? No. But you should because you could have messed this thing up, right? So this is a function since it passes the vertical line test. But the way I want you to do it, the way I want you to do it is use a t-table because there are going to be some examples in a little while where you're going to have to use a t-table. So listen to this carefully. So I'm going to do number 7 again. Well, one like number 7. Let's do one like number 7, but use a t-table. And we're going to use the definition of a function. So here's the way you're going to do this. y equals negative um, 2x minus 3. 
you do not have to know whether to line or not to to do this. You didn't have to know that. You can use a T table. Now listen carefully. Give me a number for X. One. one. All right, and so I'm going to plug in one into X. I'm going to get a Y value. So here we go. Y equals negative two times one minus three. So I see an X. What I plug in? One, right? So I get negative 2 and a negative 3, which is a negative 5. So my question is this. When x is 1, how many y values did I get? 1. But you can't stop there. you got to try a couple of more. When x is, and, 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 and always try and choose negative numbers and 0 as well. When x is 0, what do we get? Let's see what we get. y equals negative 2 times 0 minus 3. 0 minus 3, negative 3, right? So when x is 0, how many y values did I get? 1. So, so far it looks like this is a what? A function. But let's try at least one more. When x is negative 2. Aren't uh, all x equal 4 is not. That's a vertical line. All right. When x is negative 2, you get y equals negative 2 times negative 2 minus 3, right? So that's 4 minus 3, which is what? 1. one. So, so and, and at this point, you can say, well, it looks like no matter what I use for x, I'm going to get what? One y value. Just one y value. So this is a function. This is a function since for each x, x value, I get what? And, and you determine that from using a t-table. That's what you did. Okay? All right, now let's look at this. Number nine. X plus Y equal four. X plus Y equal four. All right, so you, you want to determine that's a function. Now you got to do some explanation. You can't just say yes or no. Because that's a 50 50 chance, right? You, you have a 50 percent 50 percent chance of getting it right if you don't know what's the function or not. Just guessing at it. Yeah. So what you want to do with these, with the equation is given, you want to get y by itself. If the equation is given, you want to get y by itself. Always get y by itself. Okay, so to determine, to determine if this is a function. To determine if this is a function. And and sometimes it will say this, what I'm about to say. Sometimes it will say, determine if y is a function of x. So y is a function of x. So basically you want to get what by itself? Y. y. So determine if y is a function of x, you get y by itself. And then use a t-table. Now, you can use a t-table if you don't know what the graph looks like. Because if you know the graph, then in your mind you're going to use what test? Vertical line, line, line test. But many times, depending on the equation, you really don't know what the line, what the graph looks like. So use a t-table. So if I get y by itself, if I get y by itself, now for some of you, you could probably tell me what graph this is. What kind of graph is this? It's linear. So it's a line. Um, but just get y by itself. Yeah. So y equals negative x plus 4. You all agree? Or 4 minus x. That's fine. You can say 4 minus x. All right, let's do a t-table. So for each of those x's, I better get what? 1 y. One y. So give me a number for x. All right, now be careful. You're going to say y equals 4 subtract the negative 1, right? You all agree? Okay, what's 4 subtract the negative 1? 4 plus 1, which is 5. So for this x value, there's exactly what? 1 y value. Okay, let's do a couple more. Give me another number for x. Okay, y equals 4 subtract 0, which is just what? 4. 
So for this x value, there's exactly one y value. Give me another number for x. Three. Y equals four subtract three, which is just what? Not negative one. One, right? So from there, can you surmise that that is a function? Yes. Yeah, so this is a function. So this is a function. Since for each x value, there is only one y value. And this would be your work. That would be your work. That would be what you would show. Something like this. Okay? Number 10. Right, number 10, suppose you had this one. Um, x squared plus y squared equal 25. No, that's not because of two squares. So, so you're saying center. Well, what, what is so? So you have an idea what the graph is. What's the graph? Circle. It's a circle. So if you know what the graph is, you can say something like that. You could say, well, that's the equation of a circle, and a circle fails the vertical line test. That, that's, that's your explanation. So it's not a function. So, it's not a function. so that, that could be one of your explanations. So, so we talked about circles, right? Mm -hmm. So right away, you can say this is a circle. The graph is a circle. So it fails the vertical line test. So it's not a function. All right, so that's one explanation. Now, let's suppose you were, you were told, I want you to do this algebraically. If you did this graphically, now let's do it algebraically. So here's what you would do algebraically. Okay, use, use algebraically. That's where you get y by itself, okay? All right, so if I get y by itself, first of all, I'm going to subtract x squared from both sides. They'll all agree. So I get y squared equal 25 minus x squared, yes? What's the next step? Take the square root. But remember, when you take the square root, what else must you use? Plus or minus. Plus or minus. What now? All right. So y equals, that's plus or minus. So y equals plus or minus the square root of 25 minus x squared. Okay? And watch what's going to happen. Give me a number for x. Okay. That's fine. You can say 2. 2. I get y equals plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 2 squared. Y'all agree? Plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 4. Plus or minus the square root of what? So when x is 2, how many y values did I have? 2. A positive square root of 21 and a what? Negative square root of 21. So right away, you don't have to do anything else. Right away, this is what? Not a function because when x is 2, I had how many y values? Two. That plus or minus gives it away, right? You have a positive square root of 21 and a what? Negative square root of 21. Kind of makes sense because in your mind that circle, remember we said when x is 2, there are two points in the graph? Okay. So this is not a this is not a function. Because when x equals 2, there are how many y values? So that's your algebraic, okay? That will be algebraic. Alright, look at this one. Um, 4x equal y squared. 
Now you 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 in, in number of ten, some of you recognize that was a circle. Don't say this is a circle because you don't see an x squared plus a y squared. Okay, that's not a circle. But so you, you don't know what the graph looks like. None of you know what that graph looks like. It's not a quadratic because a quadratic is is y equals x squared. That's not y equals x squared. So what do you want to do? Let's do this algebraically then. Okay, y by itself. Okay, y squared already by itself is the next step. What's the next step? Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and transpose the sides. So I'm gonna say y squared equals four x. Okay, what's the next step? Take the square root of both sides. What else do I need? And then right away, you know what? Yeah, because that plus the minus. But good, do a little bit of explanation. So, so all you do is just give me a number for x. Be careful, don't give me a negative because you can't take the square root of a negative number. So give me a number that's in this domain. Uh, three. three. Okay, three is fine. I get I get y is plus or minus the square root of four times three. Plus or minus the square root of what? Twelve. And so right away. Now I, I don't simplify the square root of twelve here. You just want, you just want to know is this a function? Well, you get a positive square root of twelve anyway. Negative, negative square root of twelve. So it's what? Not a function. So this is not a function. Since when x is three, um, there are two y values. All right. So on the worksheet, there. Um, I, I don't know how many problems there are, and I don't even remember what part. All right. Well, what's what's the issue? What's the issue? So let's suppose you had y equals the absolute value of x minus four. Now. Um, I think it was in 99 that you graphed the absolute values. Yes. Remember that's at V? Remember the V? Okay, that's at V. But but um, use a T table. Give me a number for X. So yeah, Y equals the absolute value of 4 minus 4. Y'all agree? What's 4 minus 4? What's the absolute value of 0? So for this X coordinate, there's only one Y coordinate. Give me another number for x. Three. Y equals the absolute value of 3 minus 4. What's 3 minus 4? What's the absolute value of negative 1? Okay. So when x is 3, there's only one y coordinate. Now give me a, a negative 1. So x is negative 2. Y equals the absolute value of negative 2 minus 4. What's negative 2 minus 4? What's the absolute value of negative 6? 6. So right away, you know that no matter what I use for x, there's going to be how many y values? Just one. So this is a function. Since for each x coordinate, there is what? Right. So for each. Um, No, it doesn't matter. Okay, now. So only one, right? Now, remember, remember when you graphed this last semester? It looked like this. Just to remind you. So, so, and you can do this again in another chapter when we talk about transformations. But the graph looks like this. At four, remember this is a four right here. So you see the four right here. That's what the graph looks like. And then it pass the vertical line test. Yes. But most, almost all of it, I don't even know if any of you would have remembered that from last semester. But that's what the graph looks like. Is that V? That's the values of V. So it passes the vertical line test. And if there's any indication last semester, I, 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 on every test I put a, either a, a, an absolute value or a quadratic, and over half the students would always miss it, the I graphing. <laughs>
Yep. All right. It passes by the line test. It's a function. All right. Now. Okay. So on on your worksheet, we should now be able to to do those problems that are there. They're not they're not that bad. Just just make sure you explain it correctly. Okay. So. One of the other things you did last semester was this. Okay, write this down. f of x equals uh, x squared plus 5x minus 1, let's say. Yeah, it's still section 2.1. So, so that's your function. And last semester, even the semester before that, you wanted to find a f of 3. Now, what did that mean, find f of 3? What did you have to do? So, right, so in place of x, you had to substitute 3. So you had to go to your function f, and, and remember, this is f of x, so uh, x takes a place of, or 3 takes a place of x, right? So where we saw the, the variable x, you plugged in 3. All right, and so you said, well, that's going to be 3 squared plus 5 times 3 minus 1. So notice wherever I saw the variable x, what I plug in? 3. So, and then use the order of operations. So what's 3 squared? What's 5 times 3? Minus 1. And then uh, 9 plus 15 is 24. 24 subtract 1 is 23. So then in the blank, you're going to say f of 3 equal blank. What do you put in the blank? 23. Now, if you were to graph this, and this is going to be important, remember, x is what value? 3. The 23 represents which value? The y. Very good. So what that means is that when x equals 3, y equals what? 23. As an ordered pair, very good. On my math lab, they're going to ask something like this. What, what does that represent as an ordered pair? So as an ordered pair, it represents 3, comma what? 23. Okay, B part. Let's look at B. Suppose in B you want to find, um, now listen carefully to this, F of negative X. F of negative X. All right, so I'm going to write the function again. I'm going to go ahead and write the function over right here. All right. Now, notice when I plugged in 3 for the previous one, when I plugged in 3, I put 3 in parentheses. You need to do that. Put that in parentheses. So when I do this, and, and just like for 3, no matter where, where, where the x occurred, I had to plug in what? 3. So this says, no matter where the x occurs, I have to plug in what? Negative, Negative x. That's what that says to do. I know this is f of x. I'm interested in f of negative x. Now, let's, let me mention this as well. You see, when I evaluated this function, I evaluated at a real number. I ended up with a what? Real number. Is that a real number? No, that's a variable expression. So your answer is going to be a variable expression. So look, look what it's going to look like. Okay, so where we see an x, what do I plug in? Negative x. So here's what you get. Watch. So f of negative x is going to equal, in parentheses, what do I put? And what do I do to that? Squared. Plus 5 times what? And then what? All right. Now let's think about what this is. Negative x squared means negative x times itself, which is a positive x squared. So you don't agree that all that is just x squared? Yes or no? Okay. Knows the work is right here if you need to. Negative x squared means negative x times negative x is a positive x squared. So that's this. What's 5 times a negative x? Negative and then you're left with? Negative 1. So there's your f of negative x. There's your answer. So notice when you plug in a variable expression, you end up with a variable expression. But notice it is important that you put those in parentheses. Because some of if you did not, you would have said this was negative x squared, and it's not. It's a what? Positive x squared. 
Okay. Um, all right, C. Okay, and we're not going to have time to do C, so I'm going to I'm going to do this part next time. But I want to show you what we're going to do. We're going to say f of x minus two. So this time, wherever I see the variable x, I'm going to plug in what? X minus two. Now remember, this was my expression, my function. Y'all agree? So where I saw the variable x, I plug in x minus two. Now remember what we said. Whenever you plug it in, put that inside parentheses. Inside parentheses. So I'm going to get parentheses. What do I put inside this parentheses right here? X minus 2. But what am I doing to it? Okay. Plus 5 in parentheses. What do I put? And then what? All right. And if I cover this part up, how do you deal with this? You have to FOIL, right? Okay. You have to FOIL. So watch. X minus 2 times X minus 2. FOIL. What's X times X? What's the outer? What's the inner? What's the last? Combine like terms. You all agree? Okay. So that's this, right? X squared minus 4X plus 4. The rest of it's easy. All you do is here is what? Distribute. So what does that become? And then what? And then your answer is just what? Combine like terms. What's a negative 4x and a positive 5x? Positive 1x. Positive 1x. What's a 4, a negative 10, and a negative 1? Negative 7. Negative 7. I'm taking your word for it. And that's what f of x minus 2 equals. Now, it's important you're able to do this because in this section, you're going to talk about the... Uh, Oh, Lord, I forgot. Um, okay, so in this section, you're, you're going to talk about a, a uh, let's call it a formula for right now, where you're going to have to evaluate x plus h. All right, so it's not that difficult, but notice you got to be able to do this. All right, so it's called the difference quotient. You're going to look at the difference quotient. So we do a couple more with this next class period. So in terms of, I'm going to shut this down for right now. Um,